In this session, we're going to review the procedures for debugging your program. Debugging is the process in which you monitor the program in real time and determine whether it is working properly, and then by using the tools embedded in Seascape, you can make corrections as needed. To start with, we have a program we've already written. It's very simple, just a single rung with a start-stop circuit. We've already created a screen for starting and stopping our main motor from the touchscreen. And we've also placed a pilot light object that indicates whether or not the motor is running. Before we can debug a program, that program needs to be running in the OCS. If we are going to transfer our program from the computer to the OCS, we're first going to have to ensure we have good communications between the Seascape and the OCS. In the lower right hand corner of Seascape is what's called the status bar. It indicates the status of communications as well as the run stop status of the OCS. You see local 253, where 253 is the node address of the OCS physically connected to the computer, and target 253, which is the node address of the OCS which is communicating with the computer. R indicates the OCS is in run mode. Since all indications are that we have good communication status with the OCS, we are ready to transfer our program via the download process. For a second, let's talk about the difference between download and upload. A download is a transfer of a program from Seascape to an OCS. An upload is a transfer of a program from an OCS to Seascape. To remember it properly, just imagine the OCS is sitting on the floor. To send it a program, we download to it. To retrieve a program from it, we upload from it. There are a variety of ways to download to an OCS from Seascape. The way I like to use is to press the download icon up here in the toolbar area. When I press the download button, it comes up and asks if I want to download via a feature named Smart Load. Smart Load is a feature where Seascape determines what has changed in the program and then downloads the minimum amount of code necessary. Generally, I use Smart Load most of the time. You also have to decide whether or not you have set points values you want to load and whether or not you want to verify all after the download. Since I don't use set points very often and I trust the CRC error checking during the download process, most commonly I don't select these. After pressing OK, Seascape starts the download process. It determines what has changed and determines what needs to be downloaded. Now the first time you download a program, there is a lot that needs to be downloaded. In the future, if you just make small adjustments, less code will need to be downloaded. OK, our download is complete. We now have the same program running in the OCS as we have running on our Seascape screen. We can see that we are in run mode, which is important, and we are now ready to try out the debug feature. The debug feature is most commonly accessed by pressing the icon that looks like a bug. When I press that, Seascape will fill in red all of the elements that are in the power passing state. So in my program, you can see that the only element that is ready to pass power is the stop push button, because it is a normally closed element that is not being pressed at the moment. Now if I want to start my motor, I'm going to go ahead and press the start button on my touchscreen. As I do that, you can see the start button contact is now passing power, but my motor is not running. Why is that? As you can see, the e-stop contact is not being made. As it turns out, the e-stop contact is configured as a real-world input, mapped into one of the input terminals on the controller. Since my OCS is not yet fully wired and deployed, that input is not on. And I don't happen to have an easy way to wire it at my desk. But I'm not completely stuck. I can always force the contact on. I do that by right-clicking on the e-stop element. When I do that, Seascape provides a significant warning, telling me that forcing is not yet enabled on the controller and that it is a feature you should be using carefully. Since this is just on my desk, I'm going to go ahead and enable forcing. Once I do that, a yellow box is illuminated around that particular element and it's filled in with red, indicating it is in the power passing state. Now that e-stop is forced, when I press the start button on my touchscreen, my circuit is made 
and my motor starter is energized. If I release the start button, the seal circuit, which is in parallel around the start button, keeps the motor running. And now the motor starter is going to continue to run until the stop button is pressed on the touchscreen or until the e-stop contact is unforced. After I press the stop push button on the touchscreen, the motor starter coil drops out, causing the seal contact to also drop out. Now the motor will remain stopped until someone presses the start button on the touchscreen again. 